That I run it Everything you wanna do I already done it And I got your little boo Telling me she love me I got this one Damn one Damn it's gonna be a long night Hello guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of Others, and I am back here with another video. And today, I am doing What If Luffy Was Bond's Reincarnation, Part 7, Notorious. Now, yes, this will include the Stampede movie, but I will go over it pretty fast. But it's still, you know, it's pretty dope. I try my best to incorporate everything, but I did rush it a bit. I hope you guys have still enjoyed it, but it will be canon to the story now. So, uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So, quick recap, last part, Luffy and his crew escape Sabaody Archipelago, having beaten two admirals, and then they escape and accidentally get entangled with the Kuja pirates. As Luffy meets Boa and her sisters, he then learns uh, he has become an emperor, and Luffy is also entranced by Boa, but not like all men are, and he gets a little closer to her, and the same goes for the sisters and Neon, you know, the elder of the island. So then, um, after that, Luffy learns of Ace's execution and goes to save him, and when he arrives, he beats up some people, meets pirates he's beaten before, and some new ones and old friends like Bl uh, Bond Clay. He releases Crocodile, and he would help a bit, and then he meets Ivankov, and then they go to Marine 4, where Luffy bodies everyone, basically, saves Ace, and then has to leave, and as uh, Luffy is... Um, is beating people he also unveils a new form however little did luffy know zoro his first mate was about to face kind of an ultimate challenge something that would kind of decide his future now as mihawk walks onto the island the kuja pirates arrive as do the other straw hats and frankie would yell i know we're all feeling this but this guy is dangerous right marigold then tells everyone to attack but zoro says no look at him he came here just for me i'll handle this i won't disappoint my captain everyone thinks he's being crazy but then he and mihawk disappear and reappear as they push back everyone and no one can even get close as the two seem to be in some sort of untouchable untouchable domain and with every strike they increase tension between each other clearly though zero is at a disadvantage not completely in terms of power but in terms of skill but mihawk would then laugh as he then clashed once again and he would say and he would ask who taught you this i have a lot of masters i've met a lot of incredible people one of them taught me hockey you can thank luffy for that one Bill then says the use of hockey is something your captain is phenomenal at for sure, but that won't be enough to beat me. As Zoro then says he begs to differ, saying that all these adventures have shown him that, well, if he can't exactly beat Mihawk in, you know, skill and everything, he's just going to have to use his hockey and horrible experiences of training with Luffy to stop him before he can do anything. And he then appears in front of Mihawk with tons of slashes and Mihawk can barely parry them all. And then he gets ready to attack Zoro, but Zoro would just stop him from doing so and gain the upper hand. This continues and continues and until eventually Zoro scratches Mihawk across the cheek. And it shocks everyone as Zoro then takes the chance to use his onigiri and he cuts him across the chest, appearing behind him in a blur. Mihawk however would just shrug this off and he wasn't even that affected and he cuts Zoro across the chest as well. And this bloody battle would continue for an entire day. Now you might be saying, oh why can Zoro hurt Mihawk or something like that? I said Zoro has been training with Luffy and Luffy in this series is beyond peak human level. He's literally fought God so compared to him everything that Mihawk does is barely anything. But he's still strong so you know Mihawk is having a like kind of difficult time but he could still beat Zoro. He's just testing the waters. Zoro has learned to maneuver and always try to reach Luffy but it never works so he's grown to move with precise movements and never waste a movement and a moment so anyway this battle is um, kind of long and lasts for an entire day as the two men just stand in front of each other with their swords unwavering but zoro is way more exhausted this is when everyone sees boa hancock and luffy arrive and sanji would say luffy finally stop these crazy bastards and as he says this though everyone and miyak would then feel this overwhelming bloodlust as boa would then step out onto the shore and she stares down the two swordsmen what have you done to my beautiful island She's then about to go off when Luffy apologizes in their steed, making her blush, and she said that she had to, uh, he had to make it up to her, and he said, of course. Luffy then turns and faces Mihawk, who would have sweat drip down his cheek, and he would ask, What are you doing, man? Mihawk then sheaths his sword, saying that he came to test Zoro. Really? Then how is he then? My first mate. As Mihawk smiles hearing this, he would then say that Zoro was phenomenal, shocking Zoro, as he finally earned the respect he's been wanting, and the crew is happy for him, but of course, Mihawk has to leave, as he has, um, he's kind of trespassed, and he apologizes to Boa, because coming onto a warlord's territory in this kind of way is rude. Now, as Mihawk leaves on his raft, he would tell Zoro that he'd be waiting for him, and as Mihawk would leave, Zoro starts to cheer up, and Luffy would ask, 
how the fight was. No words can describe it, Zoro would say, as after this, Luffy would then apologize for the trouble and he would get to talking about what happened in the war. As he and his crew would then be, you know, talking somewhere around the island, they would see an approaching ship and Luffy uses observation and it, to his surprise, he would see Rayleigh inside it. Rayleigh then steps out of the ship waving at the pirates. Looks like I made it. This must be fate. Luffy, can we talk? Now, we would then find Rayleigh and Luffy talking somewhere like around the forest and um, on the island and Rayleigh would ask if he wanted to be a student. You really want me? Really would then say, don't sound so surprised, I saw you. That slave you saved? He's in my custody now, so you don't have to worry about it. Luffy is happy to hear this, and then he says, look, I can't take a long break, so one month. That's all the time you have to teach me all your secrets. Really would then smile hearing this as he begins to laugh, saying, well, I'm pretty strict, so by the end of this, you might hate me. Luffy says he's you know, looking forward to it, you know, since training in hell was such a challenge. Why not take a crack at training with the Dark King? And then he remembers something as he would then ask, you and Roger know like the truth, you've seen everything, so you know about the glyphs. Among those glyphs, did you ever come across the words seven deadly sins? Um, no, why? Luffy then says nothing and goes back to tell his crew about his training plan as he then leaves and really his face turns to one of seriousness. How do you know about that? The sins are a legendary group that we barely know anything about to begin with, even after finding out the truth. Th th this kid... Anyway, now we're going to do a long time skip, and trust me, you're going to love this time skip. Now, during this, a lot of things would change. Whitebeard becomes the fifth emperor, while Luffy is the fourth since Blackbeard is no longer alive. And Whitebeard only gets even stronger as he matches Shanks now, since, you know, he was stronger than him in his prime anyway. But Shanks, even though he's not as strong as, like, Whitebeard in terms of physical strength, he's just better at using hockey. And the red-haired pirates uh, and, you know, Whitebeards and Straw Hat would just usually fight and sometimes to death, but because Chopper and Luffy were there, it was fine. Ace's bounty gets raised to 1 billion, being called the Fire Emperor, even though he's not an Emperor of the Sea. He's just really good at using his Devil Fruit now, and he can use hockey. Ivankov, with the help of the Revolutionary Army, also steals a pacifista and then plants Kuma's soul inside it, but it is no longer controlled by the government. And this means that the Revolutionaries are more determined and more happy since he was back, because he's a really good influence. And Ivankov joins from time to time and tells Dragon that he should really meet up with Luffy sometime. Of course, he's not going to yet. Now, the Straw Hat name only grows more and more as Luffy has learned a lot from Rayleigh and he starts to slowly implement it as they leave. And instead of Rayleigh like coding the ship, he gives Frankie instructions and lets him learn how to do it as that is his sort of training arc. So he's fired up with fat, uh, passion and Frankie gets to work. But while they do, um, they're not going to, you know, what's it called? How do I say this? I messed up my words already. They're not going to fish my island yet. They have a lot of things to do and they still want to train so they can't go yet. So... I'm gonna get into the power-ups. So, Usopp stops at the same island as before and trains for a month until the crew comes back for him, and this gives him a, uh, new types of bullets, and he fights ridiculously strong monsters to increase his physique, and combined with his observation hockey, he started to unlock his true potential, and he is no longer a coward, but he can still, you know, fear enemies because that's just natural. If they're strong, they're strong. Now his bounty is 200 million, being called the God Tier Sniper God Usopp. Chopper would then master and gain new points and can even control his giant monster form since Luffy helped him do it and he stops at the same place as in the original and the crew would come back for him in a month as well and he would expand his knowledge and medicine and using Luffy's blood he makes better versions of what healed Whitebeard and he named it, you guys can name it, it's blank so yeah and his hockey and armament would grow way more and his observation uh, would grow as well and his bounty is now 200 million say, uh, being called the powerful ship's doctor Tony Tony. Now Sanji learned to walk on air and control his flames that came from his legs when he kicked too hard and stuff and he would create a bunch of new moves while focusing on never losing to Kizaru if they were to ever clash again. His physical strength increases by a lot and he learned some marine moves allowing him to move at the same speed as Kizaru. Bounty is now 736 million as he is recognized as Luffy's left hand man, Black Legs Sanji. Nami learns to control her lightning tempo to an insane level and more and more of her attacks um, get her to learn to use her body as a sort of conductor, um, well, she, uh, you know, by using hockey. She, of course, then expands her knowledge uh, of the world and other things too, and how now her bounty is um, 100, 100 million, the crew's bewitching navigator, the Weather Witch. And if I'm wrong about the bounty and I already made her have 100 million, well, scratch that, now she has 100 million. Now, Zoro meets Mihawk again, and he would train him as, um, he feels Zoro has a lot of potential, and, um, 
he goes through the same training, but due to being a, like way ahead in hockey control, he and Mihawk would have more spars than Zoro fighting monsters. But quickly, Mihawk's experience starts to show itself and the fact that he's been training since he's been waiting for a rematch with Shanks. So he widens the gap between them, and this only pushes Zoro even further, and he still gets uh, his two scars, you know, the one that's on his chest, he already has it, and he gets the one on his eye, now having a bounty of 900 millions, and he's recognized as Luffy's right-hand man and his first, you know, crewmate, his first mate, Roronua Zoro. Frankie does learn to coat the boat, and along with this, he increases his cybernetic enhancements and improves the Thousand Sunny, actually making it, like, four times bigger. So, now, they're actually as big as the Whitebeard ship. Yeah, I know it's crazy. And now there were new rooms in the ship was like way more stable when Frankie also got control of hockey, but he can only use armament and it's perfect because his new power, well, it simply suits him better. Now his bounty is 150 million being called the uh, eccentric shipwright, General Frankie. Robin gets a new level in her devil fruit abilities and she can create giant hands, wings, legs, all of that. She also has a new move that creates multiple hands around her body and combined with her observation, she learns to create the sort of field around her while she parries her enemies attacks because she's just so fast at deflecting them and luffy gave her this idea and she uh, expands on it and can also make shields too like actual shields of hands and feet and so on and as luffy and her decipher more glyphs luffy starts to reveal what he knows to her a bit more and she becomes more knowledgeable about the void century which is basically just the war that luffy and his friends fought in her bounty is now 200 million the archaeologist and the sort of mom of the crew since she's the most mature nico robin now as for Brooke, he also gains hockey and learns to coat his sword with his soul and can also expel his soul out of his body. His ice sword techniques, uh, you know, increase dramatically as Luffy trains him and pushes him as far as he can. And the others do everything they can to help as well. And he has everything he has in the original and much stronger. And of course, his musician skills get awesome and he actually becomes a bit famous. You know, he's like a, a really famous magician. I mean, what's it called? Not magician. Musician, but... <laughs> between pirates he's really well known now his bounty is 350 million the musician soul king yeah now for luffy this is when she gets fun this is gonna be fun now after becoming the emperor despite him rejecting the title he would spar and beat shanks as well as eventually mihawk and it gets revealed that he beat whitebeard but these three um are always you know down for a chance for payback but doflamingo after getting his ass beat does not want to just a payback he just wants to hide and you know they're still pirates they're gonna get payback they're they're petty like that so his ob observation hockey allows him to not only see the future now but he has developed it for him to see someone's internal energy and their fighting spirit and his armament is so strong that he can release it in any way he wants and he can make it invisible while making it too powerful like way too powerful always having actually an invisible armament shield around him and it doesn't drain him at all and he learns to turn his conqueror's hockey into armament which is how real really works if i'm correct you turn your arm uh, conqueror spirit into like hot like armament and then you strike someone internally so yeah he brutally damages opponents now and he can do the same thing even without using rio since i said he could release his armament anyway and now due to living in this new world which he is convinced now is you know his old world he has gained a sort of enlightenment and can now form a hockey from places far from him with such control that he looks like an omnipotent being and as uh, conqueror's hockey has grown to such a level that he can make anyone bash him even without releasing that big aura his color has uh, also turned into a distinct blood purple and it is so potent that he can actually send out bursts that send people flying but it only turns like blood purple if he's serious he's also regained his full magic abilities and he strengthens his teams uh, um like fighting cooperation like better it's just better now and he can uh, also give people strength for way longer and enhance them for way longer and at this point his physical attributes are insane and even like if shanks's sword pierced them or mihawk's sword pierced them and white uh, white beard uh, spear like pierced them it wouldn't do anything and like one punch what at 50 percent can cause earthquakes as big as white beards yeah i'm making him way too op anyway his bounty is six billion the youngest pirate um the youngest strongest captain on the seas the immortal king yeah people now acknowledge that he's immortal so also during all these years they take uh, time to visit some people like Lebu and brooke and him um get to hang out again and get over their trauma together and the doctor is now sure that he was uh, that luffy was the boy that roger wanted them to wait for they then go also also go back to skype and see how things are going and everyone revisits their old towns usopp and kaya's relationship grows a bit more and they actually become a thing and the villagers get to see 
the new and real Usopp, and they're happy that he's grown into the kind of person that he's grown into. And Usopp also visits his mother's grave. Nami sees her sister and all the villagers on her island, and of course, they're not chased out because it is the territory of the Straw Hats. And Zoro meets his master, and because um, his old buddies are there and he knows everyone there, he marks this territory as a Straw Hat territory. And uh, yeah. Sanji also goes back and meets uh, everyone in the Baratie. He and Luffy hide their identities. And with the cooks, they would make like the best meal, uh, meals for all the customers. And Luffy tells Zef how Sanji is doing. Chopper goes back to Koreha, and by this point, having already surpassed her in terms of skill, she is then proud of him and lets him know that. And then they go visit his master's grave together. Frankie goes back to Water 7, and being seen as a hero despite being a pirate, he gets along with everyone, sees the Frankie family and Iceberg and everyone else who wasn't posing as a CB9 member, and yeah. Also, Robin has no family, which is kind of sad, but he, she has the Straw Hats and they are enough for her since they always give her the love she deserves. And as for Luffy, going back to his old town, everyone on the island um, and him have fun. He cooks, of course, and uh, he went on his own, by the way, not without his crew. He meets da uh, Dadan again and the bandits who said Ace and Sabo actually visited separately a few days earlier and he was happy to hear this. By now, Big Mom and Kaido finally had met their match, but no one really knew who was the strongest yet, since bounties aren't everything, and everyone knows that, so they're just waiting for when they actually clash, and it was going to happen really soon. Now, we cut to Luffy, Ace, and Sabo drinking near the shore of an island as Sabo takes a sip of sake, and he would then mention that Luffy had a brand new haircut. Oh, that? Boa did it for me. She thought it suited my looks. You want a pirate empress, huh? Ace would say as he would then tease Luffy a bit, but he says he honestly doesn't like, you know, mind having a relationship with Boa. Sabo would then say, well, knowing the government, if you get together, your kid's gonna go through hell. Well, if you are a normal couple, that is, Mr. Immortal, you're gonna be the worst doting parent ever. Luffy then laughs at this, saying that he's not dying anytime soon, that's true, so honestly, he won't mind teaching his kid how things work, and if he becomes a pirate or a marine, everything is up to him, he won't mind. Well, I gotta go. Ace and Sabo then get up as well as Luffy says he's got to head to Sabaody to finally head to Fishman Island and he then starts running as the two then see that he takes a step and he creates a, flat, a platform using armament and jumps off it and keeps running like that until he's gone. Ace would then ask Sabo if he wanted to ride and Sabo would say nah my group should be coming up right about now. Luffy as he's running then passes a ship of the revolutionaries seeing Hack, Koala and Kuma and he would tell them to take care. He then passes by them and the others wave goodbye to them and later Ace would start flying to his ship. Now a few minutes after running, Luffy would see the Thousand Sunny and jumps and jumps until he's in mid-air and then he jumps again using Sanji's technique as he then front flips and lands. Luffy, they would all say as Luffy would then say hey guys, so we going yet? Zoro would ask. Luffy would then say yes as Usopp would then say hey you guys heard about this pirate festival thing? Now he would then ask for the newspaper that Usopp is reading and sees that it is reading out on the news that um a famous entertainer named Buena Festa wants to bring back the pirate festival. Festival? I guess even pirates need to have casual fun from time to time. More wine, Robin? Sanji would say as Robin then nods and takes the bottle of wine, saying, it could be fun. Luffy says unless it's something like really interesting or like fun, they probably won't go. So they set course for Sabaody and on the second day something interesting would happen as when Zoro was just like resting uh, on the ship like he usually like you know is. Something drops on his face. He then opens his eyes to see a bag on top of him, having their pirate sign on it. He slowly opens it to see a scroll as he then opens it up and reads it and smiles. Hey guys, get out here right now. Nami, Brook, and Chopper would then come out seeing the package and they're shocked to find out that they're being invited to the pirate festival. And actually, it says that they're going to be unveiling Roger's, you know, treasure. And actually, all of the worst generation pirates even shanks were invited but not doflamingo because he's been a bit weird since getting beat by luffy and he's over cautious you know in case luffy actually comes to his kingdom which he will now as a few days pass the straw hats change direction and head to the festival and as they near the island delta island their ship just towers over the other ships who realize who is beside them and while some are in awe some are just in shock and fear it's the straw hats these screams echo and ripple reaching the inside of the island and people start murmuring about this as out from the announcer station would walk out Donald with his assistant Anne who has the vision vision fruit and Donald would say, my dear pirates, are you enjoying this festival? The pirates roar saying yes and Donald says that if they love it, they're going to even love their special treat that they have today. And then speaks saying, introducing the Straw Hat Pirates. 
and then creates a giant illusion of Luffy at the entrance as the sunny passes through it, re revealing a smiling Luffy would say, now this is a party. Now, as soon as they hear this and see the notorious pirates, they would all be in excitement yet in fear and Donald announces everyone on the team and their abilities and he moves on to Luffy saying, he's a man who was killed. He's a man who was killed a celestial and lived to talk about it. An actual immortal, a literal god amongst men. The immortal king, Monkey D. Luffy. Luffy on the ship then says, yeah, that's a bit much, but I appreciate the gesture. Of course, everyone is cheering for them, and now the festival is even more hype as the Straw Hats then roam around just shopping, eating, and having fun until it's time for the special games. Now, from the middle of the ocean surrounded by the island would pop out bubbles as a water stream just shoots out a giant island into the sky, and it is encased in a bubble. So things go like, like in the movie, the Straw Hats unveil their ability to essentially fly, and they make it to the top first and no one dares to mess with them as they're essentially you know untouchable and as they land luffy is amazed at the scenery and he would spot a pile of treasure and he jumps off with uh, nami looking and telling him which one is most likely roger's treasure he then jumps off with uh, zoro following and at this time other ships land and one of the ships would belong to eustace kid and some other pirates who luffy had met before and more pirates you know land and um the floating island um the floating island has like you know cameras to see uh, everything that's happening so spectators are having a lot of fun seeing everything that's happening now at this point this is when they're attacked by ripper and zoro tells luffy to go ahead as he proceeds to fight him as luffy runs he then jumps off a mountain about to use like second gear to arrive at the treasure instantly when he senses and turns smacking away an exploding cannonball which then explodes as he would then stare down apu the long arm pirate so you want to throw down huh Apu gets visibly scared as this is when Kid would then actually run past him saying he should take his time killing Apu so he can get the treasure. Now as he says this, Zoro would then yell for Luffy, shocking Kid as he thinks, he already beat Ripper? I was too careless. Zoro then tells Luffy to just keep moving forward and he would then enter gear second as he disappears, appearing closer and closer to the treasure until he finally made it. Really nothing less from the fourth emperor of the sea, Monkey D. Luffy has already attained the treasure. Luffy would have just gotten to the site then takes the box Nami told him about and he was about to open it when an explosion occurs as something shoots up from the sea and hits the island making it blow up and so the bubble pops as the pirates start to fall. As Luffy starts to fall he lightly steps and you know in the air and lands gracefully on a piece of broken land and he shouts for Zoro who would then slam into the water and the same goes for Usopp and the sun starts to... The sunny starts to fall, my bad, why do I keep messing that up? The sunny starts to fall as well as other ships, and the captains with devil fruits are helped out of the water by their crew while some manage to escape falling into it. Usopp and Zoro would then crawl onto the la uh, land uh, that Luffy was on, and this is when panic ensues with everyone in the stands running, wondering who the snitch was because this seems like, a, you know, the marines had attacked. Go check on the sunny, alright guys, Luffy would say as the two then nod and of course everyone is wondering who did that. This is when a shadow covers Luffy and he gets punched into the air and everyone sees bullet a hulking man with long hair and military wear he stopped me with one arm bullet would think you really are the king but i'm gonna be the pirate king luffy who will be you know sent flying into the air would be holding one in one hand the chest and one hand was just you know had just blocked bullets punch and it was kind of steaming because the punch was freaking powerful but it didn't hurt him as he would then smile and he created a foothold of hockey and started slowly falling. Luffy then lands far away from Bullet and um, is on his own, but there are of course a lot of pirates around, and this is when Bullet announces that he's going to beat them all. I've heard of the worst generation, which are nothing without Straw Hat in your corner. This sets off a lot of people who then go to attack, but Bullet releases his Conqueror spirit, instantly knocking out most of the weak pirates, but some crews can resist it, specifically captains. You know, some captains can resist it. Like Eustace Kid, and you know, the guy who can turn into a dinosaur, and the guy who can use straw dolls, whatever. However, they are still frozen in fear as they cannot move an inch and they are covered by this purple wave, but Luffy would then stare down this man and he is not affected by him and he would smile, which stunts Bullet. Roger? Luffy then releases his own conqueror, uh, conqueror spirit as the two waves clash and everyone is no longer affected by Bullet's hockey and he's being slowly pushed back with everyone being shocked because Bullet's ore was powerful, but then Bullet would be sent flying into the stands of the arena and he crashes into it. And I, my bad, I meant the stands. He was just like sent flying into the stands and he destroyed it. Luffy would then say, I don't know who you are, but you're a thousand years are too early to be trying to beat me in a battle of will. 
Everyone would then be in awe, and Festa, who was watching, would be getting excited because he knew this fight was going to be awesome. And of course, by this point, the Marines had already arrived. Sanji, Brooke, Nico, Chopper would find a trapped Trafalgar, who they went after since they sensed them with their observation hockey. And Bullet then jumps out of the stance, completely destroying it as he lands, and the other pirates attack him, but everyone is useless against them as Bullet simply is just out of their league, and his real goal is Straw Hat. Now, around this time, the Marines close in even more, talking about a buster call and um they are surrounded the like they're just surrounding the island and they would see luffy and bullet appear in midair and luffy would use gum gum bell to stretch his head back and headbutt him in the stomach sending him flying into the other side of the island as he crashes luffy's head was stretched back and he looks to see the marines man these guys again they better not get in my way it's already annoying having to fight holding this thing luffy then launches a bullet and the marines would land as they start to subdue weak pirates and from the sky would then land fujiotora who was then walked up to by zoro you can't just leave us alone can you that voice you are roro no zoro yes i've been waiting for this he then takes out his sword and they start to you know clash and cannons are launched down and this is when a rookie named grunt would then be subduing someone when he sees a huge pillar of purple things rising up and everyone else sees it as well as grunt would see this he is then passed by akainu and is starstruck as the other admirals would walk out as well and they would see zoro and fujiotoro's battle raging where are the other straw has kuzan would yell the marines then say they don't know and this is when something crashes right in front of them all you know in the middle of this chaos and this would be luffy as he then gets up and everyone has their swords up but they're afraid of moving oh it's you guys don't bother me where is the treasure star hat we know you have it they then see luffy does not have the chest in his hand as he turns around with a nonchalant look and, and just says oh that thing i crushed it silence would then fall as the pirates like use this kid or shot but luffy says it was simply a lock post for Loftail. he does not need it the admiral is hearing this like you know that he destroyed this yell for retreat as Fujiotori then stops fighting and leaves but he uses his power to shoot something into the sky. As the admirals leave everyone would then look up to see a giant falling meteor. Zoro you want to take this one Luffy would ask. Zoro says he's got it as he jumps into the air and Luffy would then turn to bullet. He would then yell for Luffy to fight him. Luffy would then enter gear second as he disappears and appears going towards bullet. That's not gonna work bullet would say this is my ultimate weapon don't think you can stop the future pirate king. This giant collection of metals then turns to a giant golem as he just swings at Luffy who would become quiet all of a sudden. As Bullet punches at a minuscule Luffy, his giant arm shatters. What did he do? He would think. So, we had the same dream. Luffy while in midair would then yell and this yell is similar to when he fought in the war and he enters his foxman mode. Luffy would then look at Bullet with a terrifying stare and Azura at this point is nearing the meteor and with um, Zoro using his Saizen Sekai, at the same time Luffy waves at Bullet, a simple wave. And Bullet's huge golem blows up as he's launched out, flying into the sea. The meteor would then break into tons of pieces as a smiling Zoro would then land, saying, That was cheap, blind swordsman. Luffy would then look at Bullet fall into the sea and he would be holding his beating heart and he crushes it. Sorry, but things are different now. You should have been prepared to face someone much stronger than Roger. He then jumps towards where Zoro is. Meanwhile, we see Sanji, Chopper, Brook, Robin, and Trafalgar on the straw at submarine, um, you know, ref uh, resurfacing. As they come up, they get a call from Frankie, who then tells them that they have hidden um, their ship somewhere and that Trafalgar's crew is there with them as well. So meanwhile, back to the other group, um, after killing Bullet, Luffy lands down and Zoro walks up sheathing his swords and Luffy would say, by the way, I really did crush the treasure. It's fine, Zoro would say. He says he's fine with it because there's no point in fighting Loftail if they don't want to find it in their own way and on their own. Kid then runs up to Luffy calling him crazy and Luffy would say, yeah, so what? Do I look sane to you? one of these days i'm gonna kick your ass just wait he and his crew then starts to you know run away and leave since you know the marines are here but due to luffy being here and due to them being scared of luffy you know they're less captured so they should be thanking him luffy and zoro then run to their hidden ship which should be near a cave by the island and they would see sunny as well as the heart pirates and as they get onto the sunny they would then see a bandage trafalgar and his crew on the ship and the stars are just waiting you know giving him space but then when luffy came Chopper would say, Luffy, it was so scary. It was a freaking meteor. It was it was a meteor. We saw a meteor, you know? Luffy then comfort, uh, comforts Chopper saying that Zoro took care of it, which made Chopper say he was cool and the crew keeps, uh, you know, the same attitude, being completely unfazed by what just happened. You guys are just as weird as I thought you were. He then gets up, but his crew says he should rest and Trafalgar would say, I'm fine. What did you do with the log pose? When Luffy says he crushed it, he would then say that Luffy was crazy, but Luffy also... Asked how he knew about it. 
Trafalgar then says his crew will fill him in on what he needs to know, but they have to leave. Safely, they then get onto their ship and start sailing off, and Luffy would say, hmm, too bad he's a captain. I wanted him on the crew. No, everyone would say, as they then say they need to go to Fishman Island, and they leave as well, and they exit the cave with Frankie activating a mechanism, covering them with a huge bubble, and they then plunge into the sea. Finally, I hope to see you there, Jinbei, Luffy would think. Now, as he says this, we cut to Buena Festa leaving on a ship, searching for some place to hide. As he is, though, he hears crackling and looks to see Sabo flying, and you know, above him, and then he lands on a ship. I gotta thank Luffy for this later. So, back to the Strahats, they near the deep underwater currents and the red line, um, you know, where they need to go. I hope I'm right about that. And they're, of course, attacked by underwater pirates. However, when they realized who, the, you know, Luffy was, Luffy knocked them the fuck out, and it was too late anyway. However, the currents were a bit too strong, and they carried them to somewhere they did not expect to be, as the Strahats then soon wake up to notice they're not in the dark sea anymore. Chopper drags himself all the way to the edge of the ship and gets like to get a closer look around, but then someone jumps in front of him, making him jump back. Wait a minute, Kami? The Strats hearing this name get up seeing Kami, who was waving at them outside their bubble, and Kami would say, Hey guys, welcome to Mermaid Grove. Sanji then stands up slowly as tears start falling down from his face, and he can see it. Beautiful mermaids everywhere. I finally found it. It's the all blue. Wow, he's crying more than when he left the Baratia, Luffy would say. So now that the Pirate Fest is actually canon, how will this affect the world and how will the government react to Bullet's arrival and his departure because he's fucking dead? And now being much stronger as a crew and being OP as hell as the captains, you know, well, as you know, as a captain, what is going to happen when the Straw Hats meet the Fishmen and how will they save the Fishmen? Find out in the upcoming parts. It's been me, Prince of Relives, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Goodbye.